All right, rookies, go ahead and take a seat. Hopefully you had a nice break. Finish up these donuts, because in Unit 2, we're going to have some pizzas, all right? We're going to be jumping into Unit 1, Lesson 5, which lane should you be in? And we talked about what stages we should be in, you know, white, yellow, orange, red, and brown stage. You know, how are we going to be seen? You know, what is it that we need to look for? But now we're actually physically going to put ourselves in a position so that we can utilize all those skills and all the knowledge that we learned recently, okay? So think about that. So you'll be able to demonstrate how to adjust lane position to ensure optimal visibility and safety, okay? So you're going to be learning what the left, right, and center positions are. You're going to be learning about uh, which lane is optimal on city uh, roads, large highways, two-lane highways, and the skills you're going to have after this is you're going to be able to demonstrate and describe what the left, right, and center positions are. You're able to determine how to adjust your lane position in various situations and which lane position is optimal for various road types. You're actually going to be able to talk about it. And by talking about it, I mean take a quiz on it. <laughs> so lane position. Motorcycles have the advantage of being able to adjust position in a lane allowing for optimal visibility and safety. Now, that's kind of what we said at the beginning in the goals, right? Well, here's the thing. Cars can't do that. Cars are stuck in this lane right here. But we can move over and move over. We can see, oh, I can't see? Move over, now I can see. We can easily do a lot of that stuff and get away with that because we're just a single file. That's why we can stay staggered, or even do two abreast on a road, which I don't recommend. I like staggered here. But allows us to be in a position wherever we need to be to be seen and so we can see ourselves. Okay. Here we go. Left side right here. This is what is my hand disappeared. Left side right here. And we're in the left side right there. That's the right side. We'll talk about the right pretty soon. So left right here. So typically you want to remain in the left hand portion of your lane. And this way, the people in this lane can see you quicker. Because if you're way over there, maybe there's a car or somebody there, boom, they don't see you and they turn out in front of you. You start having that issue. So we'll talk more about that in the right lane. But this way they can see you a little bit better and you can see pretty far. So this person right up front can see ahead of the vehicle right in front of them. So this is a really good position to be in. Doesn't mean you stay in it. We're going to be talking about that too. Okay. So one of the biggest dangers that you need to be aware of is that if you're riding on the left-hand portion of the lane, merging into your lane from the left will not give you much time to react. And that's exactly what I said is that they're going to come in here, they didn't see you, and you barely have time to react. Okay, not good. You need a space cushion. Center lane, here we go. Boom, center lane, right in the middle. You notice you could be over here on the left and then over there on the right, but right in the middle. Okay, I like the center lane for a lot of reasons. And that's going to give me a good space cushion on the left side, which on the right right here and the left right here. It's going to give me that space cushion. So if anybody comes out from either side, I can actually move out of the way quicker. And I learned this from tennis. Okay, so if you played any tennis, you played any court sports like that, you return to the center, you return to the middle, you return to your position after you do something so you're prepped and ready for the next thing. Tennis, somebody hits it way over to the left, I'm going to go ahead and hit it on the left side, but I got to get back to the middle because if somebody hits it back over here, I got to run all the way from there, from here. I don't want to do that. I'm going to constantly get back in the middle and move over, move over, move over. Okay? That's what I'm doing. Always dodging debris. Instead of a tennis ball coming at me, debris in the middle, move over. Debris on this side, move over. I like the middle, though. Okay? Right-hand side. So this is useful if you're trying to avoid obstacles on the rest of the road. Pretty simple, right? So just like I said, I'm in the middle. There's an object in the middle. I'm going to move over to the left. Object on the left, I'm going to move over in the middle. Object in the middle and on the left, I'm going to move over to the right. Constantly be moving. Okay? This is a test question. This is something you should be paying attention to. Okay, so on the right side of the lane, there's the most buffer room from oncoming traffic. You notice there's no oncoming traffic. So uh, if there was, you have all this room right here. And plus you have the shoulder, which is really nice. Having a shoulder is an escape path, and that's why I like the right side too. You just have to constantly figure out what it is that you need in that situation. And the only way you're going to do that is by zoning in, maybe getting into orange stage if you need to, because you saw a hazard. All right, the best lane position for you will be in change constantly. Look at that. Okay, we're going to have a little review right there. So knowing the best position is something each rider must analyze and adjust continuously. Constantly seek a lane position that allows you the best vision of potential hazards ahead of you. And I keep saying you, whatever. We're going to keep going. The quickest and closest escape path and the one that affords you the best space cushion. So look for the best vision, look for the best escape paths, and for the best space cushions. I talked about that in a few units ago. Okay, We're going to be talking about it more here. So which lane sh position should you be in? Okay, 
So while riding on large city roads or traveling down the highway, knowing which lane you should be in can be vital to keep you safe. Put yourself in a position of safety. Okay? City roads, here we go. So while riding on large city roads, the riders should constantly analyze traffic. Hey, rookies, you need to be doing this. Okay, road surface conditions, upcoming hazards uh, that you need to identify, which lane position provides the best path to travel. I know, we're talking about lane positions. Like, what is this? Guys, you have to understand. Lane positions, class, pay attention. Lane positions are very important because if you're in the wrong lane position, especially for this, if we were over here on this line right here, we would not have this much buffer to escape. So knowing that this vehicle is coming out because we see the side of the vehicle, we need to be able to position ourselves off to the right if it's needed because of a certain hazard that popped up. And I want you to understand that city roads are very dangerous. We're going to talk about lanes consistently here. So large highways, three or more lanes, okay? What we need to do is avoid the right-hand lanes for the most part because that's where we're going to have a lot of mergers coming in, coming off. Because remember, we're talking about large highways. So the only time anybody's in the right lane, the far right lane, is when somebody's getting on the highway or off the highway. And those are opportunities to get hit. If you can, be in the far left. If you can, be in the middle. Something. you got to get yourself out of there. The far left lane has a bunch of cars. You know, they're going to be going fast. So you have to find out which one's best for you. But the far right lane, uh, unless you're getting off or getting on, just get out of it. Okay? So two-lane highways like this. Okay? So keep the left-hand lane. This way you're going to have a nice buffer to the right for anybody, like I said, wanting to uh, adjust and get on you uh, with merging or anything like that. Plus, it's going to allow you to see, uh, right here we have a median, but it's going to allow you to see any oncoming traffic also. Once again, switch lanes to what is comfortable for you. The right-hand lane can be good if there's no intersections because you have that shoulder. And that shoulder is an extra space cushion. It's an, ex uh, an extra escape path. So that might be good for you. Now, what is a lane position we didn't really talk about? One single lane position. So think about that in the mountains or anywhere, like on a rural road, a frontage road, where it's just a single lane. You have oncoming traffic. You don't have a real shoulder. What position should you be in based off on all the stuff that we just talked about? So think about that. Best line of sight, best space cushions from the side to side, front and back, and your best escape paths. What lane position on a single lane road with oncoming traffic, like on a rural road or a frontage road, where is the safest spot for all those things? All right, um, I'm just going to say it here. The middle, that's all you really have. You have space cushion to the left, space cushion to the right. You can break, you can see, they can see you. You have good line of sight, good escape paths, to the left and right, like I said, and space cushions to the left and right. That's all you have. On a two-lane road, you have a whole other lane to swerve over. If, on a, a road with a big shoulder, you have a whole shoulder to swerve onto. It's going to constantly change to whatever situation you're in. Your lane will move. You need to move with it, especially if it's in a safe area or unsafe area. It all depends on what is needed. So that's part of it. You know, just constantly move. If you need to review all this stuff back here, you know, we got plenty of here. You know, large highways, city roads, which lane should you be in, you know, right, center, left. Look over this, constantly adjust, practice it out there next time you're out riding, driving, riding a bicycle, whatever it is. Now that we know what lane we should be in and all these other things from this situational awareness unit, let's go ahead and talk about the plan method, position for safety, locate hazards, adapt to hazards, and navigate threats. We're going to be talking about how to do that next week.